Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with a dull hole saw. Sure, you could just go buy a new one, but what if the store is closed? Let me show you an option. I've seen a lot of videos where they show you could use a file to get the teeth back in shape, but that's tedious, boring, and slow. So I'm going to use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, and I start by lowering the pins completely out of the way and just tighten the hole saw up to the mandrel without the pins. This keeps it a lot more solid and it doesn't move around as much. Incidentally, you want to remove the centering bit. Now, I've already done this, but yeah, grab a Sharpie and mark the teeth. Of course, this just helps keep track of where you're at. Now, these are the wheels I use, and they are, they're 40 grit, so they're a little bit rough, but there's a trade-off, and I'll talk about this more in a bit. All right, to start, I'm just hitting the top sides of each tooth. So there's, there's essentially two edges of each tooth, the concave portion and the top side. I'm just hitting the top side. It's quick and easy with a cutoff wheel. Now with the aid of that marker, I attempt to, with that first cut, I'm finding the angle. I make a slight adjustment and then I hit it two or three more times. Occasionally, depending on how bad or how dull the hole saw is, you might have to go around the perimeter twice or even three times because you don't want to hover in one spot too long. You can burn the teeth. Here's another bit. This one's pretty dull. Let's give it a go. So for this first cut, again, I'm just trying to find the angle, and if I need to, I'll adjust slightly and then grind it again one or two more times. And you'll notice I'm going across the wheel so I don't stay in one spot too long. If you burn that tooth, if you burn the corner of that tooth, that's it, it's done. And you'll know if it's burned, you'll see a blue coloring, which means it overheated and lost its temper. So there is a chance you can go around again, grind it slightly, and to remove that. And here you can see the striations in those teeth. A little bit rough from the 40 grit, but it'll work. Now, onto a bench grinder. This has a, an aluminum oxide wheel, right? We're just going to sharpen or touch up this tip. It doesn't need much. These quarter-inch centering bits on all the hole saws, they, they can get dull. So I start by putting the drill bit against the stone and kind of guess at the angle. And then I just made this simple jig, clamp it in place, and that'll help guide as I make this cut. Just barely touching it and then slightly rolling it. I'll double check it a couple of times. Like I said, it doesn't take much. And as you can see, I'm not hanging out at the wheel very long, so the tip of this drill bit is not getting hot. Mm, something fell. <laughs> All right, so that went pretty good. Tip of the drill bit looks decent. The cutters or the teeth are all sharpened, shiny. Let's tighten up this drill bit. We'll stick this thing in the drill press and give it a go. Now, there is an inherent problem with hole saws and that's buildup of sawdust or whatever material cutting. It builds up in the groove or the kerf that it's creating. Let me demonstrate. So you may have noticed, even with a brand new hole saw, they cut excellent at first, for maybe an eighth to three sixteenths deep, and then they quit cutting. Why is that? Well, the teeth are clogged from all that sawdust. There's an easy fix. And I've been doing this for decades, so let me show you. Oh, and check this out. That shaving, that's testament of sharp. So to make these cut better, basically, we're just trying to get rid of the sawdust, right? We need to remove it, give it a place to go or blow it out of the way. So that's one alternative. As you start to make the cut, just hit it with air. The problem is, my sawdust goes everywhere. Mm, me no likey. I suppose if your drill press is outside, yeah, go ahead, blast away, <laughs> right? But here's an alternative. So we're just gonna make a scoring cut, right? Just like that. And then I use a spade bit, sometimes called a paddle bit. We're just going to drill a hole, and incidentally, I like using some offset or off-size cutter like an 11 sixteenths rather than some, you know, commonly used size. And the size really isn't important. Just want to make sure you don't drill into that quarter-inch centering hole. 
And of course, the goal here is to create an escape route or an accommodation for that sawdust to escape. Yeah. Now, I get it. Maybe some of you are saying, yeah, who has time for that? Blah, blah, blah. But this makes a huge difference. And your bits will last longer. All right, check this out. I can't even tell you. Watch the feed. You can see that hole saw just going down, right? It just keeps cutting. Now you get a little bit of clogging on the teeth, but look at all that sawdust in that pocket. Otherwise, that would be in the kerf, just clogging the teeth. Oh, and before I forget, earlier I had talked about the 40 grit and the trade-off involved. Well, a rougher grit is going to cut faster and burn less. A higher grit is going to produce a smoother cut, but burn easier. So you'll have to decide what works best for you. Now, I don't always mark my drill bit, but I wanted to show you something. I see a lot of people using a hole saw, and they don't utilize this principle. So your first cut should go nearly all the way through your material. And the reason is, when you come back through from the other side, you're just going to cut barely any, and that plug will be hanging down, easy to remove. As a production manager in a large commercial shop for a couple of decades, I used to tell my guys, you know, a lot of this stuff seems petty, but it's either time spent or time saved. Yeah. All right, right there I was switching the plate on that vacuum manifold. So I can have dust collector on the spindle sander to smooth these holes. Kind of going off on a tangent here, but stay with me. I have more to show you. So this is probably well known. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But um, getting this sandpaper to curl, right? We can put this in the drill and smooth those smaller holes. So I'll admit this is a little bit low budget, but hey, it works. <laughs> All right, so these are what I wanted to show you. Some call, sometimes called a single flute or single end or maybe a deburring tool. And they work amazingly well with aluminum. They also work with wood. I have a nice little set of them. I love these things. Nothing tricky here, just smoothing the edges at the edge sander. So it just makes sense to smooth your edges first. That way, if you're routing something, your router bit has a nice smooth path to follow. That makes sense, yeah. These things are just too cool, very useful. It's basically just an inline blower. I'll try to find a link to put in the description. And don't get a cheap one. Binks makes a, a really good one that's going to last. So I was able to sharpen four of my hole saws in about an hour, and that's about the driving time it would have taken me to go to town. So yeah, it worked out. And now I have a nice little storage for all my drills and cordless tools, yeah? Flashlight right there, bam, done. And as always, thank you tons. Please subscribe. Thanks a ton for watching.